Hi and good morning. Now I've got a couple of props here that would be good for you to go and search out. Two tea towels. So two tea towels, you're going to fold like this and then roll like this. Okay, in this position. All right, the other prop, if you've got handy, now I know some of you won't have this handy, but if you're going to be watching the video a few times this week, then grab yourself a really good strong hairband. You could use an elastic band maybe, um, although it might snap, um, or a belt as well, because we're going to put it around the big toes. So you can actually tighten a belt as well, but these hairbands work a treat. All right, getting on with the class. So sitting on your mat. So I am presuming you would have paused the video to get your props. And now you are nicely seated. All right, pull the buttock flesh away from the buttock bone. Sit nice and tall, roll the shoulders back and down. Now place the hands into a prayer position Take the thumbs towards the sternum chest and close your eyes. With me chanting the invocation to Patanjali. Keep your chest lifted, bow your heads, and release your hands onto your thighs. Take the back of the neck in line with the spine and opening your eyes. Okay, well done. Okay, welcome. Welcome to anybody who's new to the class. If um, I haven't taught you before, then my name is Lynn Craddock. All right, so we're coming to a standing position straight away, straight onto it. Now just have a look at this. Now hopefully you've got either a tight hairband like that, which will take your feet into this position, make you spread your toes, or you have a belt. Um, you could use quite a thick rubber band, um, but I'm not so keen on that idea. You can use your belt around your big toes like that. So move the buckle away. So if you've got a belt, you could also use a belt like that. So while you're getting organized, finding what you need, I'm going to just show in the demo what you're going to do. Now what's really important in this action is that you learn how to get that sensitivity and the breadth and broadness in the feet. So you've got to see that you stretch so much in the sole of the foot. And with that action, you can ground down very strongly with those outer foot bones. So you're going to be here. Now, what's also important is that these inner thighs start to move to the outer thighs, lifting up nicely. 
softening your belly, lifting up, roll your shoulders back and down. So from this position, we're going to see that we hinge forward. We hinge forward. Hinging forward, taking the hands onto the floor and lifting up through the center of the body. All right, now if you need to have some support for your hands, then take it if you need to have a couple of bricks. That's no problem, as you know, um, it's really good to get the action right rather than just pushing yourself down onto the floor. So keeping yourself lifted nicely, pulling up through the center of the body and then getting that folding action. All right, so keeping in your Uttanasana now for a moment or two. Okay, now if you've got a belt around your big toes, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to organize this. So what I want you to do is now walk your hands back to your big toes because hopefully with the separation you will have a little bit of a breadth and broadness and then hold on to your big toes. Keep the inner thighs moving to the outer thighs, keep that breadth and just extend forward. See that you sink your shoulder blades deeply into the body until you want to give way with those elbows, until you want to give way with the elbows. And then keep that lift even more until you give way with the elbows. You can see that action. All right, come on then, your turn. If you're not already in it, I want you to see that you come into this action, keeping that breadth and broadness, in the Uttanasana to start with, and then you're going to see, can you walk those hands back, hold those big toes, if it's not too, too much of a problem with whatever bound um, action you're using, whether with the belt or with the hair bound, see that you get that really lovely spread of the toes. And this will be with you all through the class. It's such a great action. So nice to get that broadness in your feet. Such a strong, strong action. Okay, and then release it. All right, what I want you to do is to come up and just take a look at the screen again. So I'm gonna place my hairband back onto my feet. Like that. And then I'm going to come into this action of Adamukhasana. So pushing back very strongly, but really seeing that my feet are getting such a good action. The soles of the feet are broadening and spreading and the abdomen is moving towards the spine. And then I'm walking back. Okay, come on then, see if you can do. It's quite a strong action. So be mindful that, um, you know, you, you are grounding down with your outer foot bones, but still getting that breadth and broadness in the sole of the foot. And then walking your hands along the mat, along the mat. See that you get that nice extension. Push back with your thighs strongly. See that you work so much with those inner thighs moving away from one another. Push the thigh bones back really strongly. Okay, and now walk yourself back and come up. All right, you're gonna release that band away now. All right, so something I was teaching in the experience class, so if you actually came to the experience class this week, then you'll notice that when you're in this position, I'm just gonna put a padding on this chair. We're going to open the front of the thigh. So if you've already done this, you'll know exactly what I'm going to say. So I'm bringing it into this class. So my foot, doesn't work very well, is right on the top of the chair, on the top of the chair, and then the foot down. So those of you with difficult knee problems, this may be too much of an angle for you, and you can take your foot a little bit further down like this. So it's quite useful if you've got, um, if you can go through the chair 
um, if you've got a yoga chair that is otherwise just improvise go right to the end of the chair and you can just put your foot somewhere on the back of the chair wherever you can go is important now the whole point of this practice and preparation i'm going to put my foot back onto the top of the chair um, is to get these frontal thighs open and we're practicing in this way because we want to come into some leg extensions and this always does hold us back a little bit so what's really important here is this crease of the thigh moves forward and you lift up this frontal hip so you move this crease of the thigh very deeply forward in this way or oh, it's a bit of a killer on those creases you'll find out if you're practicing with me all right come on your turn get into the action now I've done the demo and I can talk you through all right so be sure you're really stable in this position lift up now lift out of the pelvis now I want you to reach your arms forward fold your arms push your elbows away lengthen up see if you can go up go up now you want to push your armpit chest up to the ceiling in this position so push the armpit chest up so it's almost a bit like a um, an elevated subtivirasana you get that feeling that you are opening those frontal pelvic rims and it's working hopefully really nicely for you all right come on change the legs now so we're going to change the legs do the other side and get that action so we are placing the foot onto the chair then seeing can we place the foot a little bit higher you might want to take it higher than the chair itself so you want, might want to see that you take it a little bit higher than the chair if you can if you can well it doesn't really work actually so extend it in this way I'm going to take it to the top of the chair although this is a quite a stiff side for me all right so once you're in it then we do the arm work extending opening reaching up reaching up practicing grounding down into that standing leg now armpit chest extending all the way up all the way up armpit chest all the way up get that armpit chest really working for you opening Ooh, it is quite a strong action on those thighs strong action on the groins massive actually okay and releasing if you haven't done both sides then come on get on with the other side get there change your legs and then see can you take those arms up really good action to be practicing to open those pelvic rims really strongly and then slowly release in all right still going to keep with the chair for the moment just take a look now i'm going to place a foam pad on top of the chair but of course if you don't have a foam pad you don't have to use it you can just take your heel to the top of the chair but this is where i want to be in the forward action standing in front of my chair and then taking my leg up into the center of this foam pad then i'm going to take the belt in this position pull on the belt and lift up now what's really important is that you pull back with this outer hip area and you've got to find that armpit chest again so no good to have the elbows bent like this you've got to see that you have a range of traction here and then go up go up all right come on then have a go at this action so what you want to do is to see can you get your balance can you get both legs straight if they're not straightening you need to go lower if that standing leg is not straightening you need to go lower keep your right leg up use the belt and lift up so much see how much you can get that extension so it's quite a strong action pull back with the outer hip keep the lift through the center of the body and then releasing down 
Well done. Let's go for the other side, taking the other leg up. Taking the foot around. And then be sure that that lower leg is facing directly forward. Hold on to the belt. Pull on the belt. Pull that outer hip back. Pull the outer hip back. Keep the lift up through the center of the body. Pull that outer hip back, keep both legs absolutely straight and remember the armpit chest. Remember to lift that armpit chest as much as you can. Get that strength and understanding in that action. Very strong again. You've got to pull back with that outer hip even more so. Yeah, this is the way to do it. This is how we need to really get connected with our legs. All right, and then release him. Okay, so we're gonna come sideways on now. When we come sideways on, it's really important to understand the action because this is where your lateral poses come in. So when we take the leg up into this position, I'm gonna take your leg around, sorry, your belt around your foot, and then hold. Now you can see my arm is straight. I want this thigh to come a little bit forward, edge forward. So I want to, is that a bit of a slant because I've got a tight outer hip. So we've got to see that that back outer hip comes in. This leg stays underneath the hip, doesn't come with me. All right, so we're going to be in this position. The arm will go out. So it's just like an elevated trick on us. Now you can see that. So you've got to get this action of outer hip in, outer hip in, to try to get that fullness and movement within the joint. Okay, so whatever support height you're using, you can go to the chair, you can go higher, whatever you think that you need for this support. You'll get a bit of a, um, a clue if your legs bend, then you know you've got to go a little bit lower. So just be honest with your practice at the moment. Now taking your left foot, sorry, your right foot onto the support and place the belt. So you're probably already there, I would imagine. Now pull on the belt and make sure the arm is really nice and straight. Now this inner thigh of that lifted leg needs to come forward from moving that outer hip socket. Just there, outer hip socket needs to move in very strongly. And then you're lifting up and that arm goes out to the side keeping that action really nicely. All right, and armpit chest open, and then release the leg down. Okay, sort yourself out, turn yourself around, take the other leg onto the support. You wanna see that you're reaching up onto the support, keeping that action, taking your belt around the foot, keeping the arm straight. So the arm is straight, and then you've got to see that outer hip, outer hip moves in very strongly. So it's an elevated trikonasana. So all of this needs to be understood, these actions, these rotations, what's happening to your chest. So the legs need to be grounding down. Remember that sole of the foot being really broad, the practice that we did in Uttanasana, because when you stand on one leg, you need to get that breadth and broadness. Okay, and now releasing down and stand in Tadasana. So just stand in your Tadasana, lifting up through the center of the body. And breathe, find that really nice inhalation and exhalation. Okay, and now release in. Just take a look at the screen. All right, so we're going to come for Trikonasana. Just watch for a moment. Now, you need to have quite a bit of a support for your hand because you're going to see if you can take your hand flat. So, I'm going to have this support you can have whatever you've got hanging around, a couple of books, whatever it may be. Now, when I take my legs into a trikonasana, you can step or jump the legs, the leg becomes straight, but again, this inner thigh has got to come forward 
and this leg has got to go back. And when we hinge over, when we extend, this foot, it's almost as if it's still getting that breadth and broadness. So you've got to see the breadth and broadness comes into the sole of the foot. And then we take our hand down like this. And so the hand goes down, the leg goes back, and now you've got to move that outer hip in. So if it tends to stick out a bit, which mine does on this side, you've got to see you move it right in, keep the front leg straight, and see if you can come into the rotation. Taking the arm up. Okay, let's see how you're doing. All right, so jump the legs or step the legs apart, turning the feet and keeping that lift through the center of the body, arms out to the side. Now extend over using your support for your hand and pause for a moment. Now this support can be a chair as well. You put your hand onto a chair, no problem. It can be a brick, but it's gotta be high enough so that you can take your hand flat and keep your legs straight. Hmm, you may have to think about that one. All right, so take that outer buttock in, that inner thigh has got to come forward, but this back leg has got to go back. So they've got two different directions massively so different two different directions so you take the back leg back front leg has got to get that rotation and support yeah so feel that difference this is what actually just kind of shaves away that stiffness in the groin it's a really good practice We'll rotate the whole of the chest and extend that top arm up, extend that top arm up as much as you can. And now with support, press into the broad soles of the feet and then come up, turn the feet and lift up. All right, so move the support to the other side now, making sure that you're turning the feet keeping the lift up through the center of the body and arms out, hinge over to the side, taking your support. Notice where the support goes, right to the inner leg area, taking the hand flat. I'm just gonna put my hand on the hip for the moment whilst I get these adjustments. Outer hip in, back thigh back. You've got to see that these thighs squeeze into the bone. They squeeze into the bone very strongly. You may not be able to feel that at this moment in time. It's a very strong action. Now, out hip in and get that turning action. And then keep revolving and taking the arm up if you can manage that action too. So a soft inhalation, soft exhalation, be in the pose. Be in the pose and breathe. Okay, it's always so lovely when you come out of the actions, when you come out of the poses. So take your breath in and come up and come out. Stand with your feet together, take your weight right back into your heels. Take the arms down and lift the chest up and just be in your own space for a few moments. Just watch as you are in your own space, taking the palms so that the fingers are interlaced and pull down. Lift the armpit chest, pull down. Lift the armpit chest, pull down. Lift the armpit chest and breathe. Well done. Okay, so now change the interlock of the fingers. Come into this action, pull down very strongly. Pull down, pull down, pull down. So you feel as if there's a weight on your shoulders, moving you down, keeping that weight going down, lifting up through the center of the body. So soft inhale, soft exhale. Breathe. Okay, and now releasing, well done. 
All right, so we're going to still keep with these lateral poses. So moving your support to the other side. Stand in the center of your mat. Okay, just take a look. Let's move this a little bit forward, otherwise I'm going to jump onto it. So, I'm going to jump the legs apart, turning the feet. Now just watch for a moment. I'm going to see that I get that extension through the sole of the foot. Lift the toes up when you come into this pose. Really good habit to get into whilst you're learning and then extend into this position. Now when you take your hand down, take it onto some support, but again, your arm is against your inner thigh and your buttock needs to move in very strongly. Needs to move in. It needs to move in. So just give it a little bit of movement. Now don't move the knee with, with the action, but you've just got to palpate a little bit that buttock moving in. And go down, go down, go down with the buttock. And then see how far you can extend the arm. Can you extend it right up and extend over the ear? Now, as we know, the pose, you've got to lengthen along your thigh and then get the turn. Now, of course, this can be a chair if you find staying in this position really challenging or such a job that it's a bit of a nightmare. So you can replace this with a chair if you need to, but keep your arms straight. We've all got different arm lengths, so it may be that you can take one foam pad away. The three work really well for me. All right, so jump in those legs. If you haven't already, if you've already done one side with me, then you're going to do it three times because we're starting all over again. So jump in the legs, you're turning the feet to the right and making that square, make that square. Go and see how much you can extend into that square, scrape that sole of the foot as if it's trying to get to the end of the mat, but it doesn't move. Then rest your arm, and then take your hand down in front of your thigh. Keep that lift through the center of the body so much. Soft inhalation and exhalation. Now, these are the adjustments, so I hope you're still there. Ground into your back leg. See that you're using your arm as a fulcrum and just little palpations, little palpate actions in that outer hip. Go on, move it in, move it in strongly. And now see, can you take the arm up? Can you lengthen along your leg? Can you take the arm over? As you take the arm over, reach so much. Now you've got to keep that underside waist lengthening to the armpit so you can make that turning action of the intercostal muscles. Really important, get that turning action of the intercostal muscles. Get that rotation in the pose. Okay, and then coming up. Very strong. All right, so we come to the other side now. Being in this position. All right, so feet together, lifting up through the center of the body and jump those legs again. Arms out to the side, turning the feet so strongly and then making that angle, making the angle, taking the back leg away. I now extend really strongly into that back leg. Remember, we're gonna take that left hand down to the support. Be sure that the arm is connecting with the inner thigh. And then, can you lengthen even further? Can you take that buttock down even more? Now reach up with the top arm and take it over. Now here's the challenge lengthen the whole of the side waist to the armpit and turn, get that turn in action. Can you lengthen and turn, lengthen and turn, lengthen and turn? Yes, this is the action, this is what you're looking for. Sometimes when we take our hand down too far, we cannot get that space to get the turn. This is what's so genius about using a prop. Such a useful, useful aid, such a useful help. All right, and 
releasing, coming up. Stand in Tadasana. Feet together. Take the weight right back into the heels. And reach the arms down. And breathe, find your breath. A soft inhalation and exhalation. When you're in Tadasana, ground into those legs. Lift up through the center of the body. Roll the shoulders back and down. Okay, and release in. Well done. All right, so we're going to come for using our next prop, which is the two tea towels. Just have a look what I'm going to do. Now, if you've got difficult knees or um, problems with your hips, you can take your feet a little bit higher. So you can feet, put your feet onto three foam pads or these turned basins or bolster, whatever you work with in this uh, situation when we come into Subtabhata Kanasana. So this is a really nice pose just to recover from some of that work. It's very strong. All right, so we're going to place this into the tailbone area, sacral area, tailbone area, like this. So if you find that this is really quite a challenging action, it is. It is challenging. So you're going to be in this action. So these groins really deepen. You want to find that depth in the groin and just be there for a few moments. Soft inhalation and exhalation. So we're not going to be here too long because we're going to start moving the tea towel up. Now if you find this is a bit, bit of a job, a bit too much, then you can go down to one tea towel and roll it and just place it. But it's quite a useful practice when you're trying to thaw out some of those thick um, spinal muscles. It's really quite useful. All right, so now we're going to roll this like this and then place into the dorsal spine. So we're opening both areas, trying to get this work quite quickly. So you're opening the dorsal spine now, letting the thighs release down, let the abdomen release, rolling the arms from the inside to the outside. How much can you lengthen through the center of the body? Just let the thighs release, the groins release. Get that chest really nicely open. All right, so you can really feel this work. And if you, again, if you find it a little bit too challenging with two of these tea towels together, just go down to one. All right, I'm going to take a couple of foam pads. This isn't compulsory, but if you've got something to sit on, you can use a cushion or you can use um, a book. You know, you, you'll have things around the house. All right, just take a look at the screen now. If you haven't come out of the previous pose, then take your thighs together or you might just want to look at the demonstration here. All right, so we're coming into Marishyasana 3. So pulling these thighs really deeply back into the socket, bending your right leg. Now I'm going to take my hand back first of all and then reach up with the arm. Now I'm going to lean a little bit this way so that I can then take the arm like this. Now, what's really important here is that you find that breadth and broadness in that lower back region. So you've got to find the breadth and broadness of the tea towel and the breadth and broadness of the tea towel in the upper back. So you've got to keep that breadth and broadness 
as you come into the pose. So it's quite a strong action. Keep that lift through the center of the body. So it might be that you have to go back a little bit further like this to actually get all of that connection and that rolling action of the spine. That rolling action of the spine. Okay. All right, if you're not already in it, be in it. Be in Dandasana first, then pick up that right leg and take yourself into this action, into this action. Turn, see that you bring your arm here and then you can kind of come up a little bit more so that you can get this turn in action. Yeah, this is such a key thing. Keep that straight leg absolutely straight and strong and lift up and get that turn. Lift up and get that turn. So it's strong, such a strong action. All right, so strengthen the legs now, come out of the twist and come to the other side. So you're going to bend your left leg, bend your left leg. And then start to come into the twist in action. So you might need to lean back a little bit, slice the air with the arm, and then get that rotation. So you get your broadness in the back of the spine, the lower spine, the broadness in the upper spine, keeping all of that. Okay, well done. That's great. And then release in. All right, just take a look at the screen now. Okay. Now, we're going to come into a Pavrita action. So just have a look. Now, what we've got to do is to remain really broad in the back body. So remember that kind of action with the tea towel, it's sort of opened a little bit, hopefully, and you get this turning action. So you turn. Now, when you turn, again, your arm is going to be in front of your thigh here. Now you'll know if it's a little bit too um, low for your elbow. So you can use here, you can just be in this position. Now what you want to do in this position is to lengthen the spine and then you can come into this position and lengthen the spine like this and then you can come into this position. It might be that you can straighten your arm in this way. Keep this leg rounded and then you extend. So your arm, your palm is flat and it's pressing the air and this one is actually pushing away. So this happens eventually. Now once you get into this position, you can then see, can you get more and more length to then fold into the action. It's very, very strong. Now, it may be that you don't need a foam pad underneath your bottom and you don't need to put this underneath your elbow. It actually works quite nicely because it's movable. You can move it really easy along your thigh. So come on then, let's have a go. I'm going to move off with the support now and we'll go together. So turning towards your left leg and turn, keep that turn, keep the grounded action into the thigh and then just see that you come into this action, ground down with that leg. So you've got to see that you still get this inner thigh to push forward. So that outer hip, the outer hip, Let's see here, this outer hip's got to go in. It's got to go in really strongly. And then extend. And then extend. So you get this length, the abdomen is drawing towards the spine. Now, it's very tempting to catch. Don't catch. You might be here, that's fine. Don't catch, just be there. Then extend the arm over. It's a very strong action. So now push, push. Push the air, don't just drop. You've got to see that you keep that extension so that, as if you were in Udva Hastasana, you've got to roll this upper arm towards the ear and just be here. And if you can catch, you catch. If not, it's not your turn today. 
It will be very soon, don't worry. Just keep at it. It's a very strong twisting action. Ground down with the legs again. And then, coming up if you haven't already. <laughs> I think some of you probably have. All right, now turning towards your right leg to go to your left. Grounding down with those legs and then extending. Extending in this way. Extending in this way. Keeping this action. Pulling up the kneecap and thigh. And then see, can you move along? You might not need this tea towel. As I said, it's quite nice to work with the tea towel. Keep this back leg nice and straight and strong. And then can you extend? Can you reach that arm? so much can you lengthen the side waist so much then can you take the arm over so you want to really lengthen before you even think about catching i know some of you have probably caught but that's not what we need to do we want to see that we get the length first and then see are you able to keep this stable this inner thigh it's got a ground down Okay, so see how you get on with that. It is quite a lot of work, quite a strong action. Okay, and now release in. All right, so just have a look at the screen. Now we're coming for Chitish Padasana, so we're going in a different direction now. That's the back bend. Now what's really important about this action is that you give yourself enough space the problem is that when you catch your legs in this position, if you're anything like me, you've got a really tight back area, then you just might lift to here. And that's really not where you want to be. And that's why you would use a belt. And we use the belt in this way, like this, and then extending. All right, and rolling your shoulders back and down, and then extending up move the shoulders in and then move the back of the thighs in lifting up so much with the frontal hip bones okay come on then have a go if you're not already having a dabble doing it then come into this action see that you are lifting up lifting up lifting up lifting up with the pelvis so, so strongly. All right, and then releasing down. Have another go. And if you find this still hard, lift your heels up. You can lift your heels up. Those of you who've got stiffness in your hips and your knees, don't worry about it. The good thing is you're practicing, you're looking at the video and you are doing and moving. So important. So lifting up with the back body, Lifting up, lifting up, lifting up so much, keeping that action and then releasing down. Well done, good. All right, so I'm going to show you um, an action now. I'm going to use these wash bowls. Now, I want to say, if you are practicing your inversions, I'm not going to be teaching head balance or shoulder balance today because of the time um, because of the timings but if you are going into your shishasana this is a really good time to do it so if you're going into shishasana you can just pause me for a moment and then come back after okay well done okay so I'm just going to put myself onto this and now I'm going to put the blanket on there because it gives it a little bit more support it's not over <laughs> not an overly strong base in this so all yeah. uh, right so I'm gonna do this now of course this can be modified in lots of different ways so this is really um, a nice way of working I'm going to use the belt today and then place it around the foot bone so if you've got a belt that would be very useful if you haven't got a belt then get yourself a yoga belt okay so in this position like this now i'm going to see that i push into my outer foot bones soften the belly and then push those legs straight like that so you've got to really push into 
into the outer foot bones strongly. And then roll your shoulders back and down. So just imagine you've still got that tea towel in your back. So if you've got that tea towel in your back, you've got to see that you lift up very strongly. Lift up through the center of the body. Soft inhalation and exhalation. Okay, so I think most of you are in your Setabanda Savangasana. How lovely is that? Such a beautiful pose. So, so nice. So, just be releasing and relaxing in this pose. If you find that you get a little bit of restriction in your lower back, press into your belt even more or take your heels up onto some support. Now you can use um, a bolster for that or a pile of books you can put your feet onto, that's no problem. And remember your chest needs to be really activated in the same way as if you had that tea towel in your back. You gotta really open it very strongly, lifting your sternum chest nicely. So soft inhalation, exhalation, just really enjoy this action. I really love it on this height. It really works very well in the center of the room. Quite often we use four foam pads. It's a little bit higher the four foam pads, but still really nice and effective. All right, and then bending your knees. We're gonna come out of this position. You can kick off your belt. Lift your pelvis up and move your support. Now when you come out of this, be sure that you move your tailbone towards the heel side. Move your tailbone towards the heel side and just let yourself release down. Oh, how lovely is that? All right, just glance in this direction. You're gonna just keep your back down for a moment or two. So it's really important that you just let the whole of the back start to open from being in that position. So just glance at the screen because I'll show you your next pose. Now, mm, I think you're all going to like this. So I'm going to have a blanket for my head. What's really important with this action today is that we come into our Shavasana exactly where you left off. You're going to have your feet together though. That's the difference. And then extending your heels away from you like that, spreading your toes, pausing, lifting out of the pelvis. Just take your time with this. You know, the stretch is really important. Move that out the way. Now, just watch because so many people just let the legs go. No, it's just the feet that go out to the side. And then rotating your arms, closing your eyes and surrendering the body. I'm sure you can all manage this one. <laughs> I'm sure you can all manage it. All right, so just let everything surrender. Let everything release, let everything quieten down. And now scanning the body. So we have to scan our body to see if we've done a good job. So when we scan, we're scanning, we're looking to make sure that actually we're not still alert in those muscles now. So the really good thing about rinsing, extending, twisting, scraping, combing all those muscles into place, then that's what really gives you that nice feeling. Because the body takes off that very tight coating and that's what makes you feel so good after you've practiced yoga. Soften around your facial features. Let the eyes completely soften and release. Releasing the temples. 
releasing the jawline, releasing the throat, release the shoulders down completely. So soft inhalation, soft exhalation. Listen to your breath. Okay, so for those of you who would like to stay in your Shavasana, please just stay there. If you're coming out because you're coming to the end of your class, then roll to your right side and come into a seated position. Lift up through the center of the body, lift your sternum chest. Take a few moments to still be in your own space. Just breathe in the breath and feel the expansion within the body. Thank you for joining me today for the intermediate class. Look forward to seeing you on the mat very soon. Namaste.